past few days there have been reports about temples being vandalized and hindus being killed in bangladesh it is disturbing for me that uh, such violence and prejudice uh, is openly inflicted on a community that has been living there for thousands of years so according to you what is the solution to bring peace and harmony back to bangladesh see bangladesh uh, is only 50 years old and it went through an upheaval an unimaginable levels of violence at that time and then a new country was formed out of that but uh, these uh, unfortunate events are not just happening now, has been happening off and on. There are various forces behind these kind of things. So one important thing that we need to understand is, it is happening. It's, there's no denial that it's happening, it is definitely happening. But this is not, not all across Bangladesh. So don't say it is happening Bangladesh, learn the name of the place. See, suppose something like it is happening, s similar things are happening in Kashmir. So now, if you're outside the country and you say, everywhere in India, people are being killed like this, if you say, that's not going to be fair to us, isn't it? Similarly, it's not fair to Bangladesh to say, it is happening all over Bangladesh or it's happening in Bangladesh. It is happening, it has definitely happened in a few places. Homes have been raised to ground, burned down, businesses have been burned down, temples vandalized. A few people have lost their life, unfortunately. But this is not the entire Bangladeshi population, this is a certain number. And now it uh, un unfortunately, probably that is not a country which is in terms of police force is as organized as other nations. It took three days or four days for them to respond in any real way. And uh, I believe from what I hear from the news channels and everywhere, it's been put down now. It, can it flare up again somewhere? It can. Such things are happening everywhere, unfortunately, in different proportions, between different parties, it's happening. And above all, Bangladesh is a, a very friendly nation with India. So as a nation, we can't be blackballing their entire country. We need to condemn the particular incident. You cannot say Bangladesh is doing this, no. Bangladesh is a certain number of people. Hardly probably two hundred, five hundred people might have participated in this kind of violence. It's very important that they're pinpointed, not paint everybody in that direction because you will grow animosity between nations by doing such things, which is not at all in anybody's interest, particularly not in India's interest for sure. So having said that, how do you stop this? Well, you can send the police, if it doesn't control, you can send the army, you can shoot a few people, you can bring it under control, but this is not going to go like that. It can be stopped like that for that moment. But if you want this to go, there's only one story. Human beings are doing this to each other because we are identified with different things and we have forgotten that we are human beings. We have become this religion, that religion, this country, that country, this race, that race, all kinds of things, everything except human, everything except being alive. So, this shift of identity from being a narrow sense of identity to a larger or a global or a cosmic sense of identity is a must. See, even you forgot, I told you, 
be a mother to the world, but you forgot. How many times have you forgotten since then? Hello? Yes, when you forget, if he or she belongs to something else and they disagree with what you say, fight will happen. If you are verbally saying harsh things, if things go out of control, hands will rise. If hand is not enough, stick will rise. If stick is not enough, sword will rise. If that is not enough, guns will come, all right? You need to understand, violence is not on the street. Violence is in the human mind. What is the source of this? If you look at it, the fundamental source of this is limited identifications that you have created. Because once you create an identity, the whole force of who we are, our intelligence, our emotion, our capability, our strength, everything serves that identity. Well, this may look like too far-fetched. Well, for uh, thousands of years you've settled, tried to settle your problems by beating them down or doing something else. Has it worked? Any time it can explode all over the place, isn't it? If it has to genuinely work, large-scale raising of human consciousness need to happen. If you're not willing to invest in that, you will suffer this endlessly for always. Will all problems go away tomorrow morning? No. But tomorrow morning when you wake up, will you try to at least eliminate one problem which is you? Yes. This may look like, oh, this is all philosophy. What do we do with those guys who killed these people? Okay, you go kill them. See, understand this. Right now, somebody there came and killed somebody in your family here. News cycle will run for twenty-four hours or forty-eight hours. If it is five people dead, twenty-four hours, twenty-five people, forty-eight hours, one hundred people, five days, thousand people, a month. After that, news cycle will forget about it, yes? But the person who lost somebody dear to them, you think they will forget it in their lifetime? Hello? Not only they will not forget it in their lifetime, they will… they will uh, sow the seeds of anger and resentment and hatred in their children's hearts, isn't it? Hello? Yes or no? So, this machoism is not the answer. Are you really concerned? If you're really concerned, you must understand this is a lifelong mission. If you're just one day, it is making you feel guilty, let's go shout a slogan somewhere, otherwise tweet. Tweet something or go and kill somebody. If you're interested in solution, that's not it. Somebody killed somebody and you killed somebody, you're only magnifying the problem, you're not in any way mitigating the problem. So this is a very deep-rooted problem that we have divided the world in the form of nations, in the form of religions, in the form of race, caste, creed, how many ways? As a generation of people, all the young people who are here, as a generation of people, if you don't strive to eliminate that divisions, fight will happen at some point. Today or tomorrow, it will happen. Just because you wear a peace emblem around your neck, it's not going to stop. I'm saying this because in sixties, everybody wore a peace pendant. You can wear any damn thing. With that only they will kill you <laughs> Because if my identity and your identity is absolutely separate, me wanting to put you aside, if you don't go away to put you down, 
is a natural consequence of strong sense of identity which is not inclusive. If we are not willing to invest our life to solve this problem, there is no solution. I beseech every young person in the world, I want you to understand the most important thing to be done right now is to raise human consciousness. Because what we are referring to as consciousness is not a limited identity, it is a limitless identity. If that doesn't happen, well, as we get more and more equipped, as we get more and more powerful, uh, the numbers that will die will go on increasing. Yes. So when yours die, you feel hurt, when theirs die, they feel hurt, and they will carry that hurt and come kill you, you carry your hurt and kill them, there is no end to this. You need to understand, any problem of this magnitude cannot be solved overnight. If we start working for it, maybe a generation, two generations, three generations, we, we can bring it to that place. So one important service I'm doing in this direction is, I'm knocking the heaven down. No place to go. If you want to live well, all of us, let's live well here. That's all there is.